Oh my gosh, it's 95 degrees C. Ah, everybody freak out. Okay, yes. Der Bauer saved 20 degrees C by belitting. That's a thing. But it's not that simple. I mean, okay, yeah, it is that, that simple. You delit it, you, you get 20 degrees C, but the performance difference with that isn't really super insanely significant until you enter overclocking. And the performance difference between a middle of the road cooler and a high end cooler really isn't that much, except maybe possibly on the 7950X. But I think a more interesting question is, when you're playing a game, how much heat is actually dumped into your room? Everybody remember the FX 8350 days? I certainly do. I've got a system behind me. It's 4K 120 Hertz. What does power usage look like over time? That is what we're gonna take a look at today. Has AMD lost the efficiency crown? Ah! <laughs> Okay, let's take a closer look at our setup. This is our system. This is in a be quiet case with the Pure Loop 360. You know, it's not a super expensive cooler. We're also using an ASRock 6950 XT for the GPU. Although I also tested with the MSI 3090 Supreme. I did both, but for this video, we're gonna focus on AMD 6950 testing. We're also using the ASRock Steel Legend. I've got Steel Legends, which are kind of like for like. Oh, I lost a screw. This is the Alder Lake version. That is the AM5 version. They're pretty similar. We're also using a uh, G-Skill Trident Z kit. This is the same between both systems. That is the combination XP and uh, Expo or XMP kit. It's DDR5 6000. I tuned the kit on the Intel platform to be the best possible performance, but otherwise it's you know just the out of the box profile configuration on Expo. 16 cores with the 12900K on our Z690 platform versus the 7950X. That's it. Other than the XMP and Expo profiles, the CPU and GPU are running at their out of the box stock defaults across the board. Uh, get what I did there? Across the motherboard? Uh, across both motherboards? We want to monitor power consumption. So we will monitor the computer and only the computer, not our monitor or anything else that's hooked up and see exactly what's going on. We're doing this with the uh, kilowatt hour mode or it's, it's a logging thing on our what's up meter here. It's a USB logger so we can see how it uses power over time and everything else. We're gonna be playing two hours of PUBG on each system at 4K 120 ultra graphic settings, full screen, not windowed, and we're gonna monitor how much electricity is used. Our monitor, that's an ASUS. It's the uh, UX, or it's the PG43UQ, I think. And yeah, VSync is on because I can't get any more frames out of the display. So the reality is here that all this electricity that the system uses ends up as heat, right? Yes, uh, it's some energy is lost as sound and light and the mechanical movement of the fans and that sort of thing, but stop, stop being a neckbeard, stop, stop. So it's pretty easy. If your PC is using 500 watts of electricity, it's effectively the same as a 500 watt space heater, not 495 watts at the end of the day in terms of what it's doing to your room and heating it up. And spoiler alert, most of our energy is going to our GPU, not our CPU, at least that's our expectation. So let's take a look at the numbers. So we've got our system set up. This is our ASRock Steel Legend and our What's Up Pro. The first system we're gonna test is the 7950X. It's pretty straightforward. Our What's Up Pro is actually even a little bit better than the other meter that we use sometimes, the kilowatt, because it will actually record the data over time. So when I start the stopwatch, I can compare it with the internal chronometer on the What's Up Pro. That's cool. I can I actually got a chance to say internal chronometer in a YouTube video. That's nice. But it's not, it's accurate. It does have an internal chronometer. And that keeps track of how much power was used when over time. So I can sort of compare that with the over the shoulder footage of when I'm actually playing, you know, Battlegrounds to see how busy it is. Now fan speed inside the machine is locked at 100% for both the internal CPU fan headers or just, you know, general system fan headers on the motherboard as well as our GPU. So fan speed variation on the two platforms shouldn't make a difference. The only thing we're really swapping here is motherboard and processor. Same memory, same storage, same power supply, same case, same everything, theoretically. 
except for the processor and motherboard. First up, our AM5 system. This is from a couple of runs, got a lot of footage, many, many hours of footage, an exhausting amount of footage. But when we look at the performance here, we're floating at about 565, 567 watts of power while this thing is running. And we're, we're pretty much locked at 120 FPS. Okay, it dips a little bit, but our general performance here is really good. Oh, and don't worry, I am capturing the 1% lows and the 0.1% the lows. We'll talk about that in a minute. The performance of the system overall was very satisfactory. I didn't really experience any weirdness or glitches or anything else like that while I was playing. You should know that I do have the fans set to, in the uh, software, I have the maximum fan speed set to 100% in manual control. It doesn't really run at 100%, it's still sort of up to the GPU, but the GPU fan settings were the same between both systems. All the system fan settings were also 100% uh, across the board. So system you know is running all of its fans consistently between the two platforms so with all that in mind uh, the first number that we have from our am5 system basically on the order of 565 watts and this is not an exact science at least not yet although the the data logging is down to the second in our data logger so keep that in mind we'll come back to it now for our intel system it's pretty much the same. The motherboard is going to be a little different. You can't get it super exactly the same. You gotta also look at idle power. We'll talk about that in a minute. But overall, the Intel system was using 10 to 20 watts more for the same level of performance. What's worse, the Intel system struggled keeping that 4K 120. We, we were dipping down to 90 FPS a lot more often, but like for like, ultra settings, full screen, 120 hertz, Basically, within 10 to 20 watts, I think is a wash. I was actually expecting a little bit bigger difference because the multi-core performance of our AM5 CPU is considerably higher than our Intel performance. But in gaming, it seemed not to really matter that much. At 4K 120 hertz, the GPU is doing all the work. The GPU is what's holding us back. So both CPUs are being pretty efficient with their time they're not wasting any power. So both our Intel and our AM5 system are using less than 200 watts most of the time. We're GPU limited in other words. So I started to think maybe this wasn't the right thing to do. Maybe I should swap in our 240 Hertz Pixio monitor and repeat the same test. And that's gonna make us a little bit more CPU bound. But you know what the ultimate CPU bound thing is? Rendering. Okay, maybe a gaming test wasn't what we needed at all, or at least you know, getting a baseline for a rendering comparison. So Blender, now we know that Blender has a benchmark, but Blender's benchmark completes pretty quickly. We actually need to be able to run Blender for a long time. So I did that, but to make the video a little bit simpler, we can talk about Blender performance in the context of the benchmark, because you can download the benchmark and run it for yourself. The AM5 Blender benchmark is considerably higher than the Intel 12900K, as you know. The 13th gen is on the way. There are going to be 16 E cores to make up the difference at roughly the same power envelope. So when we're talking about rendering work done, the AM5 system is getting more rendering work done uh, at the same wattage. Now for rendering, both of our CPUs were consuming around 350 watts. 350 watts? That seems crazy! We know that the processor should be like 220 to 240 watts. I mean, that's the maximum for out-of-the-box performance. You must have done something. No. Remember, these are similar kinds of systems, and the fans are running at 100% all the time, and the CPUs are maybe doing a little bit of extra work because I've got the, the monitor locked in at 120 hertz. It's kind of a weird thing. On some, in some situations, the idle power will be higher than you expect because the refresh rate is really high in your monitor. I don't know if that's what was happening here, but both systems were idling at around 100 watts, 107 watts, 110 watts, something like that. I could change that. If I change the power mode from balance to power saver, it would go from 110 watts to 90 watts but the power usage at the wall of both systems was basically comparable. And remember, all we're really doing, swapping the motherboard. Now, again, rendering performance. For a long rendering job, the Intel CPU is gonna take a significant amount of time more in order to complete the render. We know that because its Blender benchmark score is also lower than the 7950X. So if you were doing a render job and letting it run overnight, yeah, the system may finish an hour sooner. 
but for the time that the render is running, both systems are dumping a comparable amount of heat into the room. One of them will finish sooner, but both systems are dumping a comparable amount of heat into the room. When we're strictly talking about gaming, both systems are basically dumping a comparable amount of heat into the room with a slight edge to AMD. AMD is certainly more efficient. The rendering benchmarks show that, and the rendering benchmarks show that it's significantly more efficient, but AMD has also pushed the voltage frequency curve as far as they possibly can to try to compete with a single thread performance that they know is coming with 13th gen Intel. And that's beyond the, the you know, best efficiency curve that you would get from AM5 silicon. Now, both of these processors are tunable. The 12900K, I think out of the box, the efficiency is pretty terrible. AM5, the efficiency out of the box, could definitely be better, at least with the 7950X and the 7900X. Curve optimizer minus 10 on those CPUs, you, you can reduce the amount of power that the CPU uses in rendering scenarios by upwards of 50 watts with single digit per, uh, percentage uh, degradation in terms of the overall multi-core performance. Meaning that the 7950, you can feed it 40 less watts and it's still gonna utterly destroy the 12900K in rendering tasks. It's gonna reduce the power and, and blah, blah, blah. So if you wanna do that, you can. But by the same token, the 12900K can also be tuned to be more efficient on the voltage frequency curve. And it's still gonna take longer to do the render, so the total amount of heat that goes into your room for the full length of the render is still gonna be worse on the Intel platform. But for gaming, it's not time limited. It's up to you. It's sort of rendering a few less frames over time, but you're still only gonna game two hours or three hours or ever how much gaming that you wanna do. And so in terms of gaming, the amount of heat that's dumped into your room is roughly comparable. So why am I all hung up on the amount of heat dumped into your room? That kind of goes back to our hotspot conversation. So when we're talking about hotspots on the CPU, look at the shot of the CPU from AMD. We've got two tiny, tiny little chiplets and we got our IO die. When we talk about 95 degrees C, that hotspot is in a very small area uh, connected to a very large and very thick integrated heat spreader. And yes, it could be 20 degrees C cooler, but for the voltage frequency curve that the, that CPU is out of the box, it's not dumping more heat into your room. We just sort of proved that. You can make it dump less heat into your room with a negligible impact on performance by tuning. But that's also true of Team Intel. But at the end of the day, for gaming performance, it's a bit of a wash. It's not dramatically more efficient one way or the other. I think Eco Mode actually even dials it too far in the other direction for 65 watts. I think 105 watts is sort of the sweet spot, at least for the 7950X and the 7900X. In our review video of the 7600X and the 7700X, the 7600X was, it was very difficult to use Curve Optimizer with the 7600X. You can tell that AMD has really, really bend those chiplets and the 7600X basically is what it is, which is why I wasn't super enthusiastic about it. The 7600X, the eight core, is much better in that regard in that you can use Curve Optimizer and you can do some, some custom tuning. But in terms of overclocking and tuning and efficiency and, and that kind of thing, the fertile ground for that is the 7950X and the 7900X. In terms of gaming and the hot spots and everything else, because it's a bit of a wash, the 95 degrees C thing isn't really a lot to worry about. You'll see that when we do more tests with different coolers. You know, an upper middle of the road cooler on the 7900X and the 7950X isn't gonna make a dramatic difference in terms of performance at the end of the day. And just because the CPU is running at 95 degrees C, the part of the CPU that's running at 95 degrees C is so physically small and is using so little energy in comparison to everything else that it's not really dumping a significantly more energy into the room. It would be different if the CPU itself were running at like 300 or 350 watts or something like that. At the end of the day, both of these CPUs are using roughly the same amount of electricity. And for multi-core workloads, the AMD CPU can get a lot more done. For gaming workloads, uh, AMD is pushing the single core boost frequency so high that you lose whatever you would gain 
you know, you would have gained from the efficiency side of things unless you manually dial that in. But for gaming workloads, that doesn't really matter. What's the benefit that you get? That's the 1% lows and the 0.1% lows. It was significantly better on the AMD platform playing PUBG. For whatever reason, well, I mean, I think I know whatever the reason is since it's a newer platform, but for whatever reason, because, you know, PUBG is really sort of janky. It's not great. It's not really well optimized. It's not going to matter for esports titles, but for PUBG, uh, the overall game performance was better on the AM5 platform at 4K, 120 hertz, all other things being equal than, uh, you know, than the Intel system. And mostly that wasn't down to the average frame rate. Although to be clear, the average frame rate was higher on the AM5 platform because the Intel system, you know, we're, we were at 90, 89, 85, 89, 90, 95 FPS a lot more often than the AM5 system. But also the 0.1% lows and the 1% lows over a two hour span were much better on the AM5 platform. Could you tune the Intel system and recover some of that? Could you lower your graphics settings or, or other stuff to make it a little bit less CPU bottleneck? Uh, will we see more cash to combat that kind of thing in 13th gen Intel? I think the answer to all those questions is yeah, yeah. But in terms of worrying about the 95 degrees C hotspot, I don't think that's really a thing that you should do in either case, as long as it's designed to operate like that. With Intel, when you hit the cutoff temperature and it starts throttling, the CPU throttles hard and you feel it and it's there. I hit 93, 94 degrees C on the AM5 system and I never knew that I was throttling or I never knew that, I never felt throttling in the same way. So even though I hit the really high temperatures, it wasn't like the game stuttered or hitched or did anything like that because it's designed to operate at 95 degrees C in a way that's different than what we're used to. I think historically that hasn't been true and so that's why a lot of people are freaking out because if you hit that thermal throttle threshold on an Intel CPU, you feel it, you know it. The system is doing something weird. But you don't really have that on the AM5 platform. It's sort of weird. You still need a good cooler, but you don't need Herculean cooler. That's all I'm saying. I'm one of those level one. This has been a quick look at something kind of interesting. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums if you have any questions or I got it horribly wrong. I'll see you there.